of France, about the 10th hour. At this point, everyone begins to understand what a 24-hour race is. For the drivers, the thrill of the start gives way to grim determination. The mechanics begin to realize the aching fatigue that will dog them for another 14 hours. The crowd is mesmerized by the 200 mile an hour fireflies. Lama is the supreme auto racing ordeal. To race here is to face the ultimate challenge. To win is to conquer the most rigorous test. And so Lama attracts only the daring and the bold. Drivers, manufacturers, even countries seeking a place in racing's history. For all of them, Le Mans is motor racing's Mount Everest. Le Mans is the grand prize. More than 400,000 people jam the 8.3 mile race circuit at Le Mans. They're here because people will always be where the greatest test themselves. And so it has been through the years. In 1923, the crowd was smaller, but the challenge is great. From the beginning, the concept was to retain the flavor of the original city to city endurance races. In the first 24 hour event, all the entrants were French, except for an English Bentley. Subsequent years attracted various European manufacturers, but it wasn't until 1928, when a Stutz finished second and a Chrysler third, that American manufacturers took a serious interest in the race. Difficult economic times, and then the war, snuffed out America's racing efforts for almost two decades. In 1950, Briggs Cunningham, a wealthy American sportsman, brought two Cadillacs to the famed French circuit to begin a legendary quest for international fame. Later, in Chrysler-powered cars of his own design, Cunningham managed a third-place finish and for many years supported the only American team at the French Classic. Le Mans's mushrooming reputation as the supreme test of car and driver brought heightened interest in the event from leading manufacturers and drivers. Jaguar and Ferrari solidified their stature by dominating the event through the 50s and early 60s. Ferrari, in fact, won seven times in eight years, beginning in 1958. And that 1958 victory was co-driven by Phil Hill, the first American to win at Le Mans. Le Mans became the crown jewel of a series of international races leading to the world's manufacturer's championship. Victory here meant worldwide recognition. It was this goal that brought the Ford Motor Company to Le Mans in 1964 with three sleek coupes to challenge the might of Ferrari and test the rigors of Le Mans' 24 hours. They were not equal to the task as Ferrari rode home with the first three places. Undaunted, Ford came back again and again. Finally, in 1966, New Zealanders Bruce McLaren and Chris Amon gave an American manufacturer its first Le Mans victory. One year later, the revolutionary Chaparral joined the American invasion. Chevrolet powered with an automatic transmission and sprouting a huge wing Jim Hall Chaparral was another statement of American inventiveness and ingenuity. But it was Ford who gave America its greatest hour of glory. They led every lap of the race. And when it was done, Dan Gurney and A.J. Foyt celebrated the first all-American victory, car and drivers. Throughout its 50 years, Le Mans has been under continuous development. Changes and improvements were numerous, but its character has never changed nor has the challenge of Le Mans brutal 24 hours of punishment. In 1973, a lone all-American team has entered the race as much for personal commitment as patriotism. Headed 
led by John Greenwood of Troy, Michigan. The team has been racing successfully in the United States. Its sponsor is the B.F. Goodrich Company. They are here at Le Mans to race on passenger automobile tires, to submit street tires to the stresses and demands of racing. These conditions are accelerated in an endurance race. And Le Mans, with its 200 mile an hour, three mile long Molson Strait and its torturous turns, is particularly well suited for Goodrich's bold venture. The tension, exhausting preparation, and high hopes that characterize this effort are typical of what each man, each team, each manufacturer, each country brings to Le Mans. Greenwood has brought over two immaculately prepared Corvettes. One as a backup, and drivers Bob Johnson, Ron Grable, Don Yenko, and Jim Greendike to share the wheel. Crew chief Bob Johnson, a former Le Mans driver, has put together an expert crew to work the pits. The days before the race are spent sorting out the cars, learning the course, searching for that ideal mechanical human mixture that always seems so elusive. I would use plain paste the car at whatever is very comfortable and smooth. So you don't tear the car up, you don't tear the tires up, and you don't completely get tired. But the only way you can do that is to hit the right line every single time right on. In other words, it's all concentration, just total concentration on what you're doing. itself has less drilling resistance because it's radial and as far as your speed down the straightaway you can run a higher speed down the straightaway with the Goodrich tires. As far as cornering, the cornering is quite good here. In other words, the only disadvantage we get with the tires is the width and the fact that they're a street compound and not a racing compound. That's all you're giving away is actual pouring ability. B.F. Goodrich has assigned a crew of expert tire engineers to assist in the effort. Every car in the race will be running on special racing tires, except the Goodrich Corvette. The Corvette will be on street radial tires, the radial TA. The Goodrich car will race in the Grand Touring category against production line Porsches and Ferraris, legendary names. Both are here in force, all on specially built racing tires. The purebred racers of France, Italy, and England are represented by super sleek Matras, Ferraris, and Mirages. These cars are capable of touring the 8.3 mile course at an average speed of 140 miles an hour and undoubtedly will be the front runners. Race day. Le Mans is bathed in the warm June sun. Nearly 400,000 spectators settle down to enjoy this most important pageant of France the 50th anniversary race, motor racing's grand prize. As the cars are pushed to the starting grid, Greenwood and Johnson relieve pre-race tensions by discussing pit stop procedures. I don't know. Well, as we come in then, uh, you will, uh, on, on, the, on the driver chains, then when you get out, you will lengthen the seat belts for me because I'm gonna have to put the seat liner in because I can't reach the pedals the way the seat is for you. And I'll put the seat liner in, and I'll put my arm through the right-hand side, then you'll help me on with the left well, arm. Before I put the, okay, I'm gonna lengthen the shoulder harness when I, before I get out, and I'm gonna lengthen the seat. Okay. I think the shoulder harness may be all right. The seat belt's the one that's gonna be critical.
Rogers and Montres set the early pace. First one, then the other, takes its turn at the front. Greenwood's running comfortably with his competition. The Goodrich Corvette is capable of speeds of over 200 miles an hour on the Mulsanne Strait. By the third hour, the Ferrari of Pace and Merzario has a lock on first. Three French Matras follow. Johnson's now at the wheel of the Goodrich Corvette. In the pits, the crew is waiting anxiously for him to pass. Word has come to the crew that Johnson is off the course, somewhere along the three-mile stretch to Mausan. Johnson's okay and is making his way back to the pits. It will remain for him to give the unhappy details. Going down the back straight, you've just given me the sign to come in for a pit stop. That's right. About halfway down, uh, I looked at my gauges. I was about, just before the kink. There's a dip in the road. And just as I went over the hump, the cockpit filled with smoke, and the rear end locked up. The tires are all okay, so I know that it, that it had to be the engine somewhere. It didn't give you any warning at all before it no. let go. I yeah. had looked at the gauges just as I started the Mulsane straight. It happened just before I went through the kick. Yeah, that's a shame. That's motor racing, they say. That's motor racing. That's motor racing. The bold effort of Greenwood and the B.F. Goodrich Company is suddenly ended. The tension, the exhausting hours of preparation, now surface in their disappointment. They have proven their street tire equal to the challenge of Le Mans. But because an engine failure robbed them of their chance to finish, and perhaps win, the effort is less than completely satisfied. Darkness blankets the course, and with it comes the carnival atmosphere that is also Le Mans. But always the incessant wail of the cars knifing through the merriment. night. The demands of the race become apparent. Fewer cars parade the course. Lama does that. It always has. Perhaps as it should be, Matra of France has endured. France has won her first Le Mans with an all-French team, car and drivers, in many years. In 1973, the 24 hours of Le Mans was no less exacting than when it started 50 years ago. And those who competed share the knowledge that they have tested themselves and win or lose are the better for it. <laughs>